<sighs> All right. I think I can say without fear of contradiction that Hollywood has a history of racism. We already know about Charlie Chan, Mickey Rooney, Long Duck Dong, etc., etc. You don't need me to tell you about whitewashing or yellowface in American cinema. It's existed long enough and pervasively enough that everyone has at least a general understanding of it. What is slightly less well known, or at least less talked about, is the fact that even when Hollywood takes the moral high ground on social issues, it very rarely outright challenges the status quo. I think everyone would agree that Step and Fetch It is a far more racist character than Sidney Poitier. However, even when Poitier confronted racism and white supremacy in his films, he didn't really do it with the same bite that you'll find in something like a Spike Lee joint. This isn't to say that Poitier's films are secret white supremacist propaganda or anything but they do present racism in a way that is comfortable to white, middle-class American audiences. After all, if those same audiences are where Hollywood gets most of its ticket sales, then any movie that it makes can't afford to offend them. Literally. This, more than anything else, represents the core issue with the Joy Luck Club. All those changes to the narrative that I mentioned? They make sense from the perspective of someone trying to streamline the book's narrative for a film medium. But in the process, they also make the story less threatening to delicate white sensibilities. Mr. St. Clair's absence, Ted's beautification, the amplification of Ying Ying's first husband's abuse, these changes are all subtle, but they end up painting a picture that is all too familiar for Hollywood. While it isn't anywhere near yellow peril levels, it still amplifies the misogyny and toxicity of Asian masculinity, while letting white masculinity off the hook. Even the sole act of outright racism in the film is perpetuated by a white woman instead of by a man. Now, again, just because a work does not challenge a system, that does not mean it explicitly endorses those systems. The Joy Luck Club is definitely a far cry from films like Fu Manchu or Taipan. Eat. They make you very potent. <gasps> and if the Joy Luck Club was part of a much larger public canon, these changes would look far less glaring. But because The Joy Luck Club was a Hollywood movie, it got far more distribution and press exposure than an independent movie. To many people, this was THE Asian American movie before Crazy Rich Asians came out. Here's your representation bone. What, you, you want us to throw meat as well? The idea that any single work can serve as definitive representation, it's patently ridiculous. How can the Joy Luck Club represent all of Asian America when it only has Chinese-American characters? Indeed, how can it represent all of Chinese America when its characters are all of mainland Chinese descent? It can't. And yet, for the longest time, it had to. And that, more than anything else, is the tragedy of the Joy Luck Club. Now, I hate to end on such a downer note, so I think the ultimate message that I want people to take from this video, and the way that I want the Joy Luck Club to be remembered, is that it is a single part of a much larger, much more varied, and much more beautiful canon. It was neither the starting point of something greater, nor the death knell of something snuffed out before its time. Rather, it was the middle portion of a rich tapestry of film. People have said... 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. But in those 25 years alone, a plethora of Asian American cinema has been made. There's Better Luck Tomorrow, Saving Face, um, that one film Justin Chan made, uh, 
Yeah. And and even before the Joy Luck Club, there were films like Chan is Missing or A Great Wall. If you want just a smattering of the total canon, you can head on down to places like the Saturday School Podcast or the Angry Asian Man blog. It's all out there. Why does representation matter? Because you are not alone. Somewhere out there is a story that speaks your truth, and if Hollywood cannot provide it for you, the larger community of the internet can't. We just have to find our own joy and make our own luck. So, I'm Marco Keen, signing off, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, and you'd like to see me make more, please leave a like or comment down below, and I'll see ya. Bye-bye.